Welcome back, love listeners, with another episode of Built to Last, a bond more than love. I have a tremendous guest with me today. Uh, Tabitha is a conflict management, conflict resolution expert. I'm super excited to hear from her. I know that if you are in a relationship at some point beyond day one, you have had conflict. And so what better way to learn some tips some tricks of the trade from someone who is a conflict management expert herself. So Tabitha, I'm glad to have you on the show today. I'm excited to be here, Anwar. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So quick just overview of just how did you even get to into conflict management? It's a very like, niche skill set, very niche realm. Like, how did that even start? Great question. I found my way here through law. I'm an attorney by profession. And there was a time when I was working at the court in the Bahamas where we heard pretrial applications and we wrote decisions on them. And then the Supreme Court said, you know what? Before we go to litigation, why not everybody just sit down and have mediation? And so we were trained as mediators as a part of that process to hold case management conferences before trial. And I got a front seat in mediation. It was so exciting for me to realize that people could actually be authors of their own resolution and not wait for a judge who doesn't know you or doesn't know how you know each other. Yeah. Um, make that decision for you. And so it's really a case where people could do some self-directed collaborative work on resolving conflict. And so more, even though I stayed in law, I, I pursued mediation. Yeah. I kept doing courses and um, doing sessions and so on. And at one advanced mediation training, I met someone who I heard weave his own faith in God into the process. And I thought, aha, mm. this is where it all comes together. Mm. Because for me, um, who is a believer in Jesus Christ, I know his position and what, as part of my belief, he yeah. is a mediator for yeah. me. And so the thought of actually being a mediator felt true to me and felt as though it is something that Christ does. And so it is something that I could also do and walk in his footsteps. Mm. And so I then started to um, follow mediation a little more. And for about 10 years, ended up at the same university. Um, the person who gave that advanced mediation training gave me his card. Because I went up to him and said, how does someone do this for a living? And he gave me his card. And he said, we're actually starting a school um, of conflict management within Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. And so um, I just went back to the Bahamas, went back to law, went over to Cayman, um, got married, and uh, was already planning to move to the US when my husband said, oh, I'm being transferred to Tennessee. <laughs> Wow. And I thought, well, how big is Tennessee? I said, where are you going? He told me the name of the, um, his work location. And so I just went to MapQuest. It was MapQuest back then, not Google Maps. I remember, I remember. <laughs> and I found the distance and they were 45 minutes away. So we moved and we bought a house halfway between the university and his workplace. Wow. And just so that I was sure that this was all divine intervention, um, he was transferred within six months of my graduation out of, out of Tennessee. So this was something that God did because it was intentional. It was part of my purpose. And so that's how I got to mediation with a little help from above. Wow. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. And I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. We kind of just have to quiet our spirits enough to be able to listen to it. I, I can say that my journey wasn't exactly that same path, but it was one of, 
you know, going through the the trials, going through relationships that failed and all those brought me to the place of, man, like I need to be able to really understand it and to be able to not just teach, but to be able to share best practices and, and insight. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Yes. And it so, looks like the same person got us to the same place. That's it. That's it. And, and so what does that look like practically for you? Are you, you're, you know, a small business owner? Are you, are you working freelance? Like, what does that look like day to day, to day for you? Mm-hmm. I am definitely a small business owner. I'm CEO of my company, Marshall Duke Consulting, which weaves my family names into what I do. Um, Marshall is my mother's maiden name, and Duke is my grandmother's maiden name. Oh. And so that's how I am Marshall Duke Consulting. Um, I am the product of two really strong Black women. Um, who have shaped me and molded me. So I I carry some of them and what they taught me, the practical common sense things into the conflict resolution space. And in my business, I work as a trainer, a coach, or a consultant. That's awesome. That's great. And so when it comes to some of the conflict management skills, kind of walk us through what some of the the common practices that, that, that you take on with, I'm sure you do this with, with corporations, with, you know, with individuals. So kind of walk us through some common scenarios that you do. Um, Working with people who are professional women of faith, um, who are overwhelmed by workplace conflict and want to lead the team with confidence. And so I come in and I work alongside them and we work through what conflict is and we get clarity on what conflict is. And then we build confidence in themselves and in their ability to resolve conflict. Mm. And once we've done the clarity and adding confidence to it, then we hone in on strategies, how to um, resolve conflict. And that process of clarity, confidence, and then strategies or solutions is my process that I'm trademarking the workpiece blueprint. So that can be applied anywhere, Anwar. If you came to me today and you said, there's a problem that I have with my cousin and we don't seem to understand each other and we're not speaking, we can walk through that process where we, we look at what happened with your cousin against what conflict is. And we figure out, is this really conflict? Or it might just be a disagreement, you know? Or it might just be something that you are going through. Once we are able to hone in on what's happening, then we know what to do with it. And then I can give you some confidence. I can say, well, how do you feel? What's the relationship like? If there's a strong relationship, then there's a lot of um, trust, you know? And there's, there's some capital there that you can draw on, right. yes? And if there isn't, then we could talk about that. And so we work through that and we, um, we confidently talk about things that you can say to him. And we talk about your approach to the conflict. Yes. Um, how about separating him from the conflict? Separating the person from the conflict. And when we do that, we're not looking at all the things that he has done for the past 10 years that have been rubbing you the wrong way for 10 years. We're just looking at the conflict. Right, right. So you're helping people depersonalize it. You're you're really breaking down what's going on. Any potential biases is what it sounds like where the, in this case, you know, if it was me who has a bias about what's actually going on, and maybe my cousin has a different perception about what's going on. It sounds like you break yes. that down. Yes, yes, yes. And then when, when we do all of that, we look at perspective. We do some perspective taking, you know? And I would um, invite you to share your perspective. Yes? Mm. Uh, but not from where you are, but to take a step back and then share that perspective. Yes? Um, I call that going to the balcony, really where I invite people to go to the balcony and stand up and look down on the conflict. So it's a way of um, helping them to uh, put some emotional distance between them and the conflict. 
so that they can actually look at it. And then I say, tell me what that looks like. And then when we're done, I invite you to take a walk in his shoes, your cousin's shoes, because I'm gonna ask you, what does it look like to him? If, if you were looking at it from his perspective, what does it look like to him? Yeah. See, while we're doing all of that, Anwar, you are de-escalating and you're gathering data that can help you to make a decision. So you start to feel confident because now you know what it is and you're figuring out, okay, yeah, right. You know, and I've known him, you know, since we were kids and he always did that. Mm. So it's not personal to me. He really has been doing that. That's his way of joking. I remember he did that with my aunt, you know? Mm. And so we're finding ways to, to look at this conflict. And then at the end of that, we're gonna talk about an approach. We're gonna talk about how you talk to him. And I'm gonna set you up for success in that conversation. What it looks like, when's a good time to talk to him? You know, what's your body language when you talk to him? Right. You know? Um, how does he know that you are hearing what to do if it starts to escalate again, you know? <laughs> so that's what working with a conflict management strategies looks like. Um, now, you hear me talking a lot about resolving that conflict. And then you hear me talking about conflict management. And so the thing that is important to note here is that Conflict resolution can happen when both people are willing to resolve the conflict. It's a mutual thing. Mm -hmm. So if your cousin is willing to resolve it as much as you are, then yes, we are in the conflict resolution process. But if something happens and you discover that he is not willing to um, resolve it for whatever reason, then we move to conflict management. Conflict management is working with clients to help them manage conflict that can't be resolved. So I can do both of those. I always start with resolution yeah. because that is the goal that is true to my ethos. I always feel that relationships matter. Yes, 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 they do. Yes, that's my watchword. That's my tagline, relationships matter. Yes. You know? So I always start with conflict resolution. And then if we see that it can't be resolved, then I would help with conflict management. That's awesome. So one thing that kind of comes to my mind is, is timing of all this, right? Because a lot of times, let's face it, we as humans, we have a lot of pride. So yes. too many times we don't go the more idealistic route, which would be nipping the conflict in the bud as soon as it happens. Sometimes it festers and we normally seek out professionals when it's at its very breaking point or tipping point, or at least what we perceive to be the breaking point or tipping point. So how would you encourage people to seek out a professional like yourself to, to, to mitigate, manage, to resolve conflict at its earlier stage? Always, there is something called the conflict continuum. And if you think of it along a horizontal axis, it starts on the left with normal give and take and normal, normal um, communication, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, before that, there's avoidance. So there's avoidance and then normal communication. And then we get to the stage where there's a disagreement. And so that would require some facilitation where a professional can step in and help facilitate a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then there's negotiation where a professional can help people to negotiate. And then there's mediation. After mediation, we don't wanna get there. There's litigation and other um, stronger forms of conflict. So with respect to seeking help, it would be good if you find that you are conflict avoidant, if you find that you avoid conflict and you don't know how to address an issue, it is good to seek help from a conflict management strategist, from a therapist, from a counselor, seek help right. to get you to a place where you have 
normal open communication, open and honest communication. Yes? Yeah. If you are already having open, honest communication, but there's conflict and it moves you to the need for facilitation or negotiation or mediation, seek help. Because someone can sit with you and guide a discussion or someone can sit with you and, and teach you how to negotiate, how to advance your own interests and how to negotiate for something that you need, as well as a neutral conflict management. A strategist can be your mediator and a mediator between you and the other person. So something I, I think is interesting, you kind of hit on it a little bit is, is you know, the, the, the neutrality of, of a professional, right? Yes. And, and as professionals, we kind of know, okay, that's our job is, is to be neutral. And when talking to clients either before or after sessions and, and talking to friends, family, talking to everyone, there's this fear or call it ego of, I don't want to be the first person to, to reach out to a professional because then, you know, I've shown my hand or I'm showing weakness. What would you say to people who are, who are in that position where there's a conflict and they are afraid to be that, that first person to reach out? I would say that vulnerability is healthy and you're giving yourself a gift by reaching out and saying, I need help. Now, when you reach out to a professional, you're not necessarily reaching out to the other person. If you reach out to a conflict management strategist, that person can help you um, do the work and the other person may not even know that you reached out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are at a stage where you actually want to work with the other person, with a mediator, you can still ask the mediator to reach out to that person. So you don't necessarily have to go cap in hand if that's an issue for you. Nice. The mediator, there's a, it's a formal process. Um, the mediator would send a letter saying, so-and-so has reached out to indicate that there's an issue and they would like to, this, they would like to mediate. Mm. And so that's a first step that you don't need to have if you don't feel that you have the emotional resources to actually take that step. Wow, that's not that's that's really good. That's really good because I I've, I've had people reach out beforehand and say, hey, you know, I want to talk to a a coach or a counselor, or but you know, my partner doesn't believe in it, and and so they ultimately sort of abdicate that uh, that that autonomy or, or that power, that confidence that, that they actually do have um, for the sake of, of, of peace in, in quotes there. Um, yeah. So that's, that's great encouragement for, for knowing that they can reach out and they have avenues to be able to reach out where it's not necessarily, you know, being perceived as weak or, or I'm the one that's giving in. It's, it's that vulnerability is a sign of strength. Absolutely. Vulnerability is strength. That's awesome. That's great. Great. And so you do a lot. I know you are, are very versatile in terms of, you know, your services and, and, you know, who your client can be. But if you could just narrow that, like, like who is your, your preferred clients and, and how can they contact you? How can they connect with you? I work with professional women of faith who have conflict overwhelm, who are leading teams and they want to lead those teams. They want the teams to thrive and they want to lead the teams confidently. And I have a website, Marshall Duke Consulting, um, and that is marshallduke.com. So you can reach me at marshallduke.com. You can find me on Facebook, Marshall Duke Consulting. And there's a special place that people with a passion for conflict resolution hang out and that is a Facebook group called Your Resolution Room. You can look for Your Resolution Room and you can come, you can join us. Now, if you are joining the Facebook group, we ask you to answer three questions because we screen. We want to keep everyone in there safe and on purpose. And so we ask you questions to see whether you are really serious about conflict resolution because that's the life we live in that group. Yes. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, and all that information is going to be available too in our, in our description. So we, we definitely make sure people have that information available. 
Absolutely. And on my website, you can actually download a conflict resolution ebook that I wrote. It is for free and it's 31 conflict resolution strategies to help you communicate better. And so that's one strategy for every day of the month. You can download that on my website and take it away as something to, you know, actionably work on and read and practice. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And so with that, we're going to go into one of my favorite sessions, and that is Two Truths and a Lie. You know, everybody that I bring on to the, the show, you know, sometimes has a very professional side and they have their, their, their personal side. And I love to mesh the two because that's what relationships are all about is being able to see that full spectrum. So whenever you are ready, hit me in no particular order with your two truths, your lie, and I'm going to do my best to guess them. All right. Omar. I was excited to prepare for this. <laughs> I did my best. So I'm bringing my best game to the table. Two truths and a lie. All right. I am right-handed. I lived in seven countries. I did ballet. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Let's see here. Um, you sound like you're well-traveled. Yeah, I heard Cayman, I heard Bahamas, definitely US. So I'm gonna say that one is true. Okay. You, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess this about you that you have pretty uh, well, like posture. You kind of carry yourself very smoothly. So I'm gonna say that that probably came from ballet. I'm gonna say the anomaly is the right-handedness that you're probably actually left-handed. Ah, uh, for for those who are listening to this, she grabbed the cup with her right hand. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. The lie is that I did ballet. Oh man. Okay. Okay. That's really good. I thought about the right hand question about two hours ago because I couldn't think of a third one, mm. and I said. Almost everyone uses the right hand. So maybe I'm gonna throw that one in as a sort of a little trick question. So yay! That was good. That was that was good. This is fun. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm glad you enjoy it. You you've been a phenomenal guest. I, I appreciate you, you know, taking time to to chat with us a little bit. And there is one question that I almost never prompt anybody for because I want to hear the raw and authentic answer. And that question is, what is your definition of a healthy relationship? Hmm, that's a great question. A healthy relationship is where we can love and respect each other and also communicate the easy things and the hard things mm. with an open heart. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tabitha, the conflict management expert, Thank you for, so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you, Honor. This has been fun. Awesome. So glad to be here. Thank you.